Hey, my name is Dan. I used to work at the biggest dealership in the country. Now I teach fine folks like you how not to get fucked when buying a car. Now in this video, I want to talk to you guys about dealership fees. I know I made a video about it. It was a really long time ago. The reason I'm making this one is because I seen this thing, what I'm about to talk about, in Consumer Reports, and it blew my fucking mind. They are advocating that there are some dealership fees that are unavoidable. I mean, I kind of like Consumer Reports. I don't hate them like I, like I hate, you know, Kelly Blue Book, for example, or uh, JD Powers. But what I saw from them was just, holy shit. It was mind-blowing. As if somebody was paying them. Okay, let's start with number one. Documentation fee. So they're saying that it's... A charge of between 300 and 500 and 900 dollars could be 13 fucking hundred dollars depends on the car and the dealership that you have to pay and I actually heard somebody somehow I stumbled upon the video a guy explaining what's documentation fee and why as consumers we should pay for this so his his thing was Hey, we should pay documentation fee for the dealerships because, you know, in the back room, somebody has to store the paperwork and process the paperwork. Okay, let's think about this logically. Let's, let's think about this. On, on, on bare minimum, you're going to pay $500 for documentation fee. $500 for somebody to store the paperwork because they physically has to have to store the copies. Someone to email the paperwork to the bank, fax the paperwork to the bank, email and fax to the DMV, send the letters out, s send the title. It's just a minimum wage employee or maybe somebody making $12 a fucking hour. It's not a very skilled job to send fucking emails and copy paperwork. So somebody is in the back room doing all this shit, right? Now, 500 times, how many cars do you think a dealership is selling? 10 cars a day? 15 cars a day, Let, let's say seven cars a day, let's go bare minimum, seven cars a day, let's say five cars a day, five times 500, that's two and a half thousand dollars. Are you telling me the person in the back room that's making bare minimum fucking wage is making now two and a half thousand dollars a day, a fucking day, a day, is that what you're telling me? Like, come on. Stop being stupid. Can we turn the stupid down just a little bit? Just a smidget, all right? Documentation fee is bullshit fee that you don't need to pay. If you have to pay it, not a problem. Take that money off a of fucking price of the car. Simple as that. $500 for a documentation fee, not a problem. Lower the price of a car by $500. If the dealership is telling you, we have to do it. Okay, do it. Get the price of a car lower. Simple as that. All right, now let's move on. Guaranteed auto protection. Okay, so this is gap insurance, and I don't know how they actually fucked this up, but it's not guaranteed auto protection. It's guaranteed asset protection. This gap insurance, guaranteed asset protection, is let's say you buy a car, but this applies to cars, boats, ATVs, any, anything, really, it, you're, anything you can think of, you know, big expensive things that depreciate and you have to insure, this applies to. You can get this on your anything, okay? So you buy a car or a boat or a motorcycle, right? For $35,000 and two weeks later, somebody crashes into you and your insurance company, because you had full coverage on your car, because you're required to when you take out a loan, is gonna pay out how much the car is worth. How much is that $35,000 car worth two weeks later with like 500 miles on it and a ketchup stain? It's not worth $35,000. What is it worth? 10% less, that's minus three and a half thousand dollars. That we're at uh, 31.5. So the insurance company is only gonna pay you 31.5, but you owe to the bank $35,000 plus the fees, plus the registration, plus all the shit that you have to taxes, plus taxes. So that 35 turns, turns into 38, 39, maybe $40,000, let's say 38. So you owe 38, but the insurance company is only going to pay you out 31.5 because that's what your used car with a ketchup stain in 500 miles is worth. Guaranteed asset protection insurance which is like $5 a month from your insurance company. You don't need to be buying it from a dealership for hundreds of dollars. It's five 
fucking dollars from your insurance company. Every insurance company has it and in fact they will probably require you to buy it. That's five fucking dollars. Ins dealerships are even marking this shit up. So because you had guaranteed asset protection, you will get paid $38,000 what you owe to the bank. So guaranteed asset protection will not pay what your property, what your motorcycle, what your car is worth at the time of an accident, but what you owe to the bank. Does that make sense? I hope I kind of explained it pretty decent, all right? Okay, next one, title and registration. Yes, you have to pay title and registration. I'm not sure why they included this here because this is not a dealership fee but they can still fuck you on this one. They can still do it. They can tell you it's more than what it actually is. So what you gotta do is you call your DMV or licensing department or tag agency, you know, every state calls this shit different ways, but it's the same thing. And you tell them, hey, I am buying a $15,000 car. How much money do I need on top of that to register the car, right? They're gonna tell you how much is gonna be on taxes. They're gonna tell you how much is gonna be for registering the car for the license plate and all the bullshit. As simple as that. They're gonna tell you how much it is. Now you have that information and guess what dealership can do? They can't fuck you because you have the numbers. You have the proper numbers. All right, now sales tax. Okay, I just covered that. You're gonna have to pay sales tax unless you get real creative. On YouTube, there's a lot of stuff you can get creative with. Just a, just a, just between you and me, all right? Just, just a little, <laughs> All right, destination charge. Um, this is something that dealership also called delivery fee, all right? They had to bring the car from wherever the fuck it was to the dealership. So what? That's not your fucking problem. You don't have to pay for it. When you buy a cheeseburger at McDonald's, do you pay for a destination charge? They had to bring the fucking french fries, the buns, the ketchup, the meat from somewhere. No, you don't pay that, right? When you go to Walmart and you buy something, do you, do you pay for delivery fee or destination charge? No, because that's business expense. Stop paying their fucking business expense just because they had to bring the car from somewhere. That's their fucking business expense, all right? Do not pay for this shit. And on new cars, it should be included. So don't fall this. On new cars, it's already included in price of the car. So if they're gonna be double charging you, they could do that, they could do it. Don't fucking fall for this shit. Now here are a couple of fees that Consumer Reports, not just anybody on the internet, Consumer fucking Report said that you may not have to pay. Those fees, you didn't have to pay them either. Like that is 100% you don't have to pay. These are, things that you may not need to pay. These are possibly avoidable fees. Let's go, advertising charge. Again, same thing with like destination fee. Don't pay for this shit. Advertising charge does their business expense. They're the one that chose to put their big ass fucking name on the billboard. They're the ones that chose to run sleazy ass fucking TV ads. They're the ones that chose to run annoying ass fucking radio ads. They're the ones, and you're not at their dealership because of those stupid ads. No, you're a smart customer. You are at the dealership because they have the best price. That's it. And you don't, you don't even have to physically come to the dealership. You can do all the paperwork over the internet. That's how all smart people buy it. Only like really, really, I don't know, I don't want to sound like degrading, but not very educated customers buy it. When I used to work at the biggest dealership in the country, the reason they were biggest is because they worked with every single brand that was out there, from Honda to Jaguar. And here's the difference between Jaguar buyers and Land Rover buyers and Volvo buyers because it was all in one dealership, like all in one parking lot. And the Honda buyers, Honda customers would come to the actual dealership to buy their shit. Jaguar, Range Rover, Volvo customers, because those cars are more expensive, they're like, you know, 70, 80, 90, to $100,000, they would not come to the dealership to buy the car. They would do everything, 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 I mean, absolutely everything over the internet, and the car would be even delivered to them. Yeah, that's just a different mindset. That's different mentality between somebody who's buying a $20,000 Honda Civic and somebody who's buying a $100,000 Range Rover. Somebody who's buying a $100,000 Range Rover is looking to be served. They're not gonna be chasing around like a little fucking mice, you know, like a hamster on, on a wheel. Please give me a discount. 
please, 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 please do this for me. No, when somebody is buying a car that's that expensive, they're coming to a dealership like this. Fuck you, give me the best possible deal or I'm getting the fuck out of here. And they're doing that over the email, over the phone. Are you gonna give me the best possible deal? No, click. Are you gonna give me the best possible deal? Nope, next, that's it. They're not in a hurry. So you gotta be smart. You gotta be always searching for the best possible deal. Next one, extended warranty. I actually made a video about extended warranty. Stay the fuck away from extended warranties. Oh, that's all I'm gonna say because there's actually a whole video about extended warranties. Do not buy them ever. They are 100% scams. If you think you need extended warranty, buy it separately from Google. Google that shit and you're gonna be able to get yourself price that's five, eight, ten times lower. Dealerships buy these warranties for hella fucking cheap and then mark them up and sell them to you. It's not a magical fucking warranty. You can get the same shit. Next one, additional dealer markup. So this is gonna look like this. There's a Maroni sticker, the blue sticker on the window, and then there's gonna be a little addendum, tall skinny sticker on the side of the big blue sticker, all right? And then it's gonna say, pinstripes, bigger wheels, winter tires, uh, better light bulbs, I don't know, some kind of magical coating on the car, uh, special pattern lug nuts. They will put anything they can possibly put on there. And what it is, is just extra money. They will charge you five to 10 times as much for all the shit that's over on a addendum sticker comparing to what you can get it for aftermarket. For example, pinstripes, they're gonna charge you $50 for pinstripes. If some of you don't know what pinstripes are, it's really skinny white lines on a car, you know, Typically Cadillacs would have it, Chevys would have it, some Fords also have it. You can get pinstripes for $5 on Amazon, five fucking dollars. It's not a $50 product, all right? Special lug nuts, they're gonna charge you $150 to $200. Again, you can get special pattern lug nuts on your car for like 25 bucks off Amazon. It's, and and here's, here's something else. Who is gonna steal wheels off your $35,000 fucking Honda Accord? Nobody is gonna steal that shit. There's Bentleys, there's Ferraris, there's Mercedes, there's Jaguars, there's fucking Maseratis. And you know what? They're gonna go past all that straight to your fucking Honda Accord. <laughs> Come on, let's get real. Nobody's stealing your ugly ass fucking 17 inch rims. You're buying uh, a, a regular car. If you're buying a fucking Ferrari, if you're buying a Jag, if you're buying a Range Rover, okay. All right, spend $25 and put them on yourself. But seriously, you think somebody's gonna not steal your car, but they're gonna jack up the car. Hold on, everybody, hold on, hold on. It takes us five minutes to steal the car, but we're gonna spend 20 minutes here stealing your fucking rims. Come on, let's, let's get real. Like this is not fucking 80s, you know. Just, just let's, let's get logical here. Common sense, all right? All right, I think I'm done here. Look for the best possible price on the internet. You don't need to be going to a dealership. Do everything over the phone. Do everything over the email. Simple as that. Do not be going to a dealership to negotiate. You're not a professional negotiator and do not pretend you are. You're telling me, okay, I'm not gonna get into this. Like, don't pretend you're a professional negotiator. It's better to contact 50 dealerships and let them negotiate with themselves and you. Let them fight for you instead of you fighting with the dealerships. Let pen dealerships against each other. Let them fight for you. You're the only customer. They do not have 50 other customers for that car. And guess what? If somebody buys the car you're looking at, there are 200,000 more of them for sale in the country. You don't need to be getting stuck on one car. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up below and click the subscribe button over my head or watch one of those two videos if you wanna see more money saving tips about cars. This is Dan with 60 Minute Car. I'm signing out and I'll see you on the internet.